Unpredictable. It's open house tonight. Would you welcome Shelley Winters? I was in the makeup room. Yeah, I was in a makeup chair, makeup chair. They put you back like this. And suddenly I got this big kiss. It was Freddie Prince. Oh, I wonder what I could do if only he was young. I mean, if I was younger. What could I do? Well, wouldn't you go out with a Freddie? It's how old? 23? 22? Wouldn't you go would you go out with a 22 year old? If he was fella? twins. 23, 23, 46, oh no, it didn't work. Well, anyway. You wouldn't go out with that fellow that young? Well, I wouldn't go out with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now look, if, yes. if a man say... Right. Uh, your age, our age, <laughs> well... <laughs> what was I supposed just to be? I don't mind Wait, telling my age, young... I do, so shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess we're about the same age, huh? Eh? Um, maybe I'm a year or two younger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You were under it. contract at RKO, weren't you? Come on, I was never under contract at RKO. We used to hang around RKO. <laughs> right after the Second World War. <laughs> I understand you helped them build it. <laughs> No, you know. No, no, it was okay. Columbia. All right. It was Columbia. Well, you know I'm teasing. So anyway, what? You started what? to say something. I forgot. Oh, now, well, if a man your age goes out with a girl 23 or 24, nobody thinks anything of it. That's true, not age. Except their mother. But, uh, <laughs> but if a woman, a mature woman who has experience and love and... Uh, Lots to give. Money. Goes uh, out with a younger man. With a 23-year-old boy, she's condemned in our society. Why? <laughs> Why? Well, I, would, I wouldn't, I know, I wouldn't can condemn you if you were out with a 22-year-old. Is Freddie still on the lot? You see? <laughs> and I guess they're getting even. They're going through a period in Hollywood where girls used to, you know, used to be going to an office and a uh, producer would say, may I see your legs? And now they say, are you kidding? Can I see your legs? <laughs> really, it's going, yeah. it's, really, you know, it's sort of... The pendulum will swing the other way before it comes. Those days are kind of good on in a way, aren't they? Yes, now they take their clothes off. I mean, I really don't understand it. In my day, you had to paste your dress, the cleavage, That's you know, right. it was a, a husband and wife. What do I mean? I'm making myself so old. But anyway, I just, I did a picture with Ronald Coleman. We couldn't be in the same bed. A husband and wife had to be in the twin beds. A double beds. life. Yes. That was a super picture. You, well, you know, and, yes, that was a great Thank you. Picture. Thank you, the that person was. who saw it. A double, and, double life. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, in that scene, he strangled me, and they wanted sort of the... I always get killed in pictures, don't I? Well, anyway. Yeah, uh, you have been, uh done away with a few uh, yes. times. Anyway, in that picture, he sort of strangled me and, and, and uh, right in the middle of it, they had to bring down the Hayes office, which are the censors of those. Uh, censors, kids, censors, you don't know about those. Uh, they had rules. And he, they had ruled that he had to keep one foot on the floor. They had, as long as the camera could see one foot on the floor. Because could, you were in bed. Yes, he could do anything he wanted on the bed, but as long as one foot was on the floor. On my next guest, Oliver Reed, is a case in point. Uh, he, he's gaining uh, international fame as an actor, and he's been starring in films like Women in Love, uh, The Three Musketeers, and currently is the rock musical Tommy. And uh, this is the first time we've had him on the show, or at least we've had a chance to meet. Would you welcome, please, Oliver Reed. <laughs> nice to have you with us. Thank you for having me. How are you? Quite extraordinary. Yes, that's what... <laughs> that's what I hear. You and Miss Winters have never... Uh, Never worked together. No, we haven't. Didn't you used to be under contract at RKO? No, you see, she... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm intimidated by the British. <laughs> Why is that? You know, most Americans, and I've said that on the show before, seem to be intimidated by um, English people in general. They feel a little, I guess, insecure. I don't no, most, mo most of them, you see, we made love to. <laughs> most of them. <clears throat> I would have remembered. <laughs> You've forgotten. <laughs> no, I don't know why. I think it's a myth. I think it's very polite. I think America is an amazing country simply because um, it's comprised of a mosaic of European culture, do you understand? Yeah. And people that came to America came to America, it seems to me, because they thought that they were either economically or socially or religiously persecuted. And they came and they made a, a happy place of it. Right. Some of them behaved themselves and some, some of them were quite loud. We have a great mixture here. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> 
television. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought it was my turn. <laughs> well, we can discuss the derivation of that word if you want. Well, that's a word that is. Uh... We're talking with Oliver Reed and Shelley Winters, and you brought up the word kinky, which is a word they use in England quite often, but it's yes. not too used here. Well, How would you define I that? And think English are rather kinky. They never talk about sex. Never. We just do it, madam. That, I guess don't you? <laughs> That's quite British. Yes. yes. <laughs> we, we talk about it a lot in America and discuss it. Do you know, I'm playing a colonel in my next film, and this is why I look extraordinary. I comb my hair, and I thought, you what? look like Hitler. Excuse me. <laughs> That's why I didn't recognize you. Do you know that Hitler was an Austrian, and most Prussians and British are very close, and that's why we fought each other. Mark my words. So. <laughs> so, anyway, you're doing it. So, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm playing a colonel. I thought, I don't know what to do. So, I, but actually, I went into the, half this is pencil, because I've only grown it for four days. It proves I'm not terribly virile, but they penciled the drink. <laughs> And I was going to... I remembered. <laughs> that is why, ladies and gentlemen, you woke up the next morning with my moustache. Yes. On, on um... Sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes a moustache and a mask will hide the identity. Uh, How come you get a moustache? <laughs> Here. Yes. Can I leave now for the theater? <laughs> I have to be on the stage in a little while. You don't really have to leave, do you, Sean? No. And you have met before. And you do you know there's no way? Shh, there's no, well, Shh. Be quiet. <laughs> Can we end the show now? Please be quiet for a minute. Yes, sir. Good. I, I am not really used to this. Will you please be quiet for a minute while I talk to this gentleman? Good. I'm on the show. Yes, sir. To talk. Okay. <laughs> not just to hear you, madam. Yes, sir. Right. <laughs> right, right, Oliver. And she was saying it was a bad audience? <laughs> Women's liberation, madam, will never survive. <laughs> Not while I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> this could turn out to be a hell of a fight tonight. About that. Anyway. <laughs> what a non sequitur tonight. Things just kind of trail off and... She's all right. She can't shout at us now. Yeah, she knows. She's so much for women's lib. Who's the lady that shouted? Do they have a women's lib movement? A uh, big in England also? Always. Oh, always. All but uh, uh, the women in England are quite good. They're always in the kitchen, so you can't hear them when they shout. Do <laughs> you think that's where they should be? I think, I think that most women, I think that most women are very happy. I really think that most women are happy in the kitchen, not because uh, they like... Ah, oh, men make the best chefs. <laughs> when do you ever go to a hotel and find the, sh the chef is a woman, madam? I think Shakespeare they... wasn't a bird, madam. And neither is Johnny. I think if they paid women in the kitchen as much as they pay chefs in a hotel, I think women would I love think to be in the I... kitchen. I think, I think that basically women, women are very happy in the kitchen simply because it means that they're feeding their children and looking after their man. I think that um, the, the time arises, I think the time arises when a woman is put out to work. And I think then when she comes back and says, oh, I've had a heavy day. You have the old fashioned concept, huh? Yeah, but it's fairly sweet. I mean, the women's liberationists, if they thought about that. Shh. <laughs> Quiet, woman. <laughs> women's liberationists. I think that I think that women's liberationists. Now that's what is known as sad warfare. When you can continue. I think that women's liberationists sometimes do extraordinary things. I don't think. I don't think that, in, in actual fact, that it it, it 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 gives them much armament to their cause. 
I mean, the fact that I have been smothered in whiskey, and it is whiskey, <laughs> and it is whiskey, <laughs> I can taste it, <laughs> has, pays no cause to the lady. There are going to be a lot of people on this program that will laugh at that, and there will be several who will probably be quite indignant. I am not indignant, because this is indicative of the bad manners of a lot of chauvinist ladies. <laughs> I like this show myself. <laughs> but then I shall stay here until it dries. I hope you still just 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 lick it off. If Ed was here, he'd help you clean up. Well, thank you.